Uh, we're here at the Lenara Connect, and uh, who are you? Uh, John Masters, uh, Chief Arm Architect at Red Hat. And you've been working on ARM Linux for the last 22 years, is what you said? <laughs> what were you saying before? Yeah, I said I've been working on Linux for about 22 years. So I started using uh, uh, Linux when I was uh, 13, and uh, I'm in my mid-30s now. So uh, it's a very long time to be uh, uh, involved, but it's actually... Uh, uh, I'm a relative newcomer compared to uh, some of the people uh, in this space. So you, uh, your, your, your business card says ARM enthusiast? No, what does it say? ARM? Uh, I'm architect. ARM architect? Yes. But you're the ARM, uh, what do you call it? Uh, not Cheerleader. Cheerleader? <laughs> fanboy? Yeah. No, what what yeah. should we say? But yeah. I mean, it's been a while now. Um, yeah. Is it, is it happening fast enough? Now it's happening. Now there's some huge chips. Yeah. They're going to be very, very powerful. Right. They're going to take over the whole server market, right? <laughs> Well, that's, that's one of the aspirations that the ARM uh, ecosystem has, right? So uh, I'm often seen as a, a fanboy of uh, ARM servers. And the reason is that um, I think there's a disruption happening in the server market now where you're seeing uh, the fact that, that uh, Moore's law has basically come to an end. Some people don't believe that, but I, I think it pretty much has come to an end. And uh, single-threaded performance is, is, not, is not what is defining the industry anymore because it's not increasing at the same rate it used to. And so actually what's defining the, uh, the future of the industry um, is uh, you know, machine learning, accelerators, lots of additional uh, workload optimization that's happening outside of the core. But the core is still important. You've got to have a good enough compute story. And the opportunity for ARM is that um, they now have a chance as the ARM server cores are, are rapidly catching up and meeting the same kind of performance of uh, the other architectures out there, right? Uh, it, it, it means that ARM has an opportunity to get into the mainstream server space. And I think that's going to start to happen over the next uh, year to 18 months. You're going to start to see some you know, big uh, name brand uh, OEM and, and cloud vendors starting to get very interested in this space. But uh, is ARM also solving the single-threaded uh, need? Well, I because think... Because some of, maybe the Thunder X2, maybe the new Qualcomm chipset are right. quite powerful. You probably have the secret benchmarks, right? You know how how good they are. Well, I think the fun thing is, right? So, so if if, if you want just the, the the fastest single thread performance, actually the fastest single thread performance in the industry, isn't uh, you know your 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 regular x86 servers or your uh, ARM servers. The fastest single thread, the highest clock speeds possible, are actually some of the more uh, you know, big I and traditional IBM machines and so on, right? And not, I don't just mean power, I mean like, you know, mainframe machines, right? Those, those clock very, very high and so on. Mainstream compute is a trade-off. You want to have a certain amount of single thread performance, uh, but you actually don't want to uh, take all the, uh, the downside of running your clocks that high and having your thermals that high and having to have the kind of costs of manufacturing that comes with having uh, that kind of quality of silicon that you need. So actually what you want is uh, you want that sweet spot. You want good enough performance. And so hitting the kind of performance that you get from, say, an x86 class part today, that's where the ARM vendors are getting to now with their, their second and third generation designs. And so you mentioned a couple of vendors there. Um, Very exciting they, ones. Yes, yes. Well, I've been obviously involved with all of these guys for, for many years. Uh, and I'm I'm very very bullish on those those two vendors in particular, also the others. But you know what what Qualcomm and Cavium are doing uh, is, is is very exciting. These are you know mainstream server class uh, parts. Um, they're not wimpy cell phone cores. These are ground up you know server designs intended to be put into a server big space. Big chips. Big chips. And the thing with big chips is, why do you have a big package? You have a big package because you've got memories on there, right? So. You know, everyone who's building a chip now has you know, thousands of pins, and that's because you're running all these IOs off there. You've got lots of cores, Even you've got lots of memory. Some of them are 10 nanometer, yeah. and they're still a huge chip. That's right. It's that's going right. to be well, really chip, interesting how, how big yeah. it's going to be. That's, that's right. The actual, the actual dies, uh, can't speak to how big the dies are, but certainly the packages are huge because you've got so many pins coming off it because you're running so many IOs off there. You've got so much memory, you've got so much uh, you know, PCI, you've got multi-socket, multi, multi -socket, um, all the standard server features. And some of these companies, well, let's, let, I'll mention <coughs> Qualcomm yeah. is actually quite happy to be a very aggressive against Intel. Right. And probably the other guys too. 
Yeah, I think uh, everybody I think, wants uh, to really be a significant, huge player, and the the arm is going to reach the twenty five percent by twenty twenty, right? So I'm I'm a big believer that ARM can take a significant chunk of the silver market. I don't know if it'll get 25% by 2020, maybe. We'll, we'll see how it plays out. It's going to depend on how you measure what a server is, because a lot of the traditional enterprise data center guys are not going to replace their existing x86 machines with ARM servers overnight. And in fact, you probably don't even want them to. There's not really uh, as much value in just replacing something you already have. The, the interesting opportunity is adding something that's net new. So we're doing a lot of work in the, in the NFV and telco space with people that are blazing trails using ARM servers for you know, telco workloads and, and running you know, basically uh, LTE phone calls and the like uh, on ARM. That's a very interesting opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity for, for cloud. There's a lot of opportunity for, for enterprise, but it's not just sort of subtractive or not just replacing. It's, it's about adding something new. Um, and, and uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the Qualcomm uh, uh, Centric really, uh, really is a very interesting example. I think Centric and then also Thunder X2, um, they are good examples of the kind of server class uh, ARM parts that I've been waiting for <laughs> for the past uh, you know, five or six years that I've been working on this. And uh, I'm guessing if things really ramp up, yeah. suddenly some kind of company, let's say a big G, a big F, or big something, <laughs> yeah. uh, if they make a big order and suddenly things happen quickly, then right. you have a phone number, you can just call up a whole bunch of Red Hat guys to come and ramp up a whole bunch of solutions very quickly, right? Uh, that's you, right, and operators are standing by, ready to take your call and uh, and your contribution towards subscriptions right now. No, I mean, I, I think exactly, though, I think I think there's a... There's a um, because Red Hat is a big team, right? There's a big team. The philosophy, and they are all ready to to make the swap over to ARM. Well, well the philosophy has been uh, that actually Red Hat has a strategy called multi-architecture, which basically means things that are not traditional x86 servers. So it's not just ARM. There's other architectures as well that, that you obviously see in the industry right now happening Risk as five? well. Uh, well, not Risk Five because okay. uh, well, I, I speak to the Risk Five thing. So Risk Five is a very interesting architecture. Um, but Risk Five is is not something people are putting into servers, and the reason they might put it into servers on an adapter card, they might do it in IoT. It's very interesting for Red Hat to follow these areas. But the thing with Risk Five is, uh, if you want to put it in a high class server part, high performance server part, it's going to cost a billion dollars. And uh, it'd be very interesting if someone did a Risk Five startup with a, a server processor. That'd be interesting. But the cost of building that would be at least a billion dollars, and I'm not seeing people uh, with that kind of investment dollars. So, so from a Red Hat perspective, we're looking at this multi-architecture future, which is really around having you know, more than just x86 as an offering, and that's because that's what customers want. But what customers want is they want the same, we call it Red Hat Enterprise Linux or RHEL, they want the same RHEL experience, um, regardless of which architecture that they choose to run on. So actually what Red Hat's done for the past few years is build its portfolio of enterprise Linux offerings for all these different architectures. And so they're already there. They're, they're, they're available to customers today. There's actually a beta release right now of uh, RHEL 7.4 for ARM that people are actively using and testing on machines. And so if there is a big customer demand, we're obviously ready to uh, to go and respond. Ready, but can even ramp up, get things done even well, like a bit. People ask with me. New ideas maybe. Right, well people ask apps. me. It's kind of like apps people need also. Yeah, that's true. People asked me at this conference, they said, um, at Lenara Connect, we're, we're here in Burlingame, they asked me, um, uh, you know, uh, how many people at Red Hat work on ARM, right? When we started six years ago, uh, it was myself and a couple of colleagues that started the team. And now we're at a point where there are about 10,000 people working on ARM. And the reason for that is everyone in the company has some involvement with ARM, everyone in the company has some involvement with x86, everyone has an involvement with every architecture because we make it just another architecture. And so a lot of people are using um, ARM or they're doing uh, software development and their binaries are getting built for ARM and they're not even aware that that's happening because it just happens. Our build systems, when you build some software that most of our developers are working on, uh, it actually just gets compiled for everything at the same time, and we treat it as just another architecture. 
And uh, when one's arm has taken over the whole market by 2022, <laughs> say, right, right, right. Then uh, you could you in the right spot to be the next CEO, right? Well, I'd love it. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, I've said to I've said to, to, to my CEO many times. He's he's actually one of the main reasons I I love working at Red Hat. Jim's an absolutely amazing guy, but you know, if he wants me to be CEO one day, then, then great. I'm, uh, I'm ready and willing to uh, take on that challenge. He's on holiday, right? Hey, and if he does, he'll come back and there'll be arms everywhere. It'll be amazing, you know. So, so, uh, so I think there's a, a, a big opportunity uh, to kind of be proven right, if you like, that I think arm has a, but, but um, it, by being proven right, you're not proving someone else wrong. You know, like, like there'll still be a lot of other uh, architectures, there'll still be a lot of and different Intel things. Intel are going to make some amazing ARM server chips yeah. very soon, right? You know, the interesting thing with, with, with some of these other players, right, is uh, I'm a big fan of competition. So the moment that you have really high-end, fancy, um, high-performance ARM cores that are challenging some of the existing vendors, what it's going to do is it's, make, it's going to make them innovate, right? So it's good, it's good for customers, good for the industry, good for everybody, because you know the Intel guys will respond. That's what they're good at doing. They've so that's, responded a lot to everything that it, ARM it, has been doing the last well, six years. And, and you know There's what? There's a whole bunch of new Intel server chips that are inspired a lot by what you did, and, and, what and, Linaro did. And yeah, I think that's true. And I think also if you look at, say, uh, you know, watching uh, just AMD and Intel together right now with uh, with Epic, right? Uh, the response to, to the surprising success for, for some, they were not necessarily expecting Zen and Ryzen and, and Epic to be as as uh, as successful as it has been, but you've seen the reaction. You've seen Intel in the client space coming out with the Core i9 series. You've seen uh, the response there on the server and they side. They also came with microserver, um, uh, small server systems. Exactly. As a response it, it, to the whole to, to the microserver. Atom. Right. Atom was in a response to ARM, right? Yeah, and Xeon D and so on. So, so I think there's. I think what happens in the industry is when you have this these. Uh, competitive offerings, it just drives uh, everyone to innovate faster. And I think, you know, I don't know what Intel's working on, so I'm just speculating here as much as you are, but you know what? They're the leading manufacturer of silicon technology still, right? Others are catching they up. That, they say this, I mean, others are catching up. Yeah. You, look at, you look at the roadmap for, there's something called the International Semiconductor um, uh, sort of uh, roadmap, right? That, that talks about the different node sizes over time. But the ARM was on 10 nanometer before Intel. Well, it depends on how you measure the nanometer size, okay. right? So, so Intel measured their 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 feet, their minimum feature size uh, slightly differently from others. They're very conservative in that number. So actually, Intel 10 nanometer is pretty pretty true 10 nanometer. Other people might have maybe a 12 LP or 14 nanometer. That's kind of the same, but. Over time, they're all they're all kind of catching up with each other. But the interesting thing is, Intel's still the lead manufacturer. So to your point, if they ever did want to fab, uh, you know, ARM server cores, right? I'd love to see that. Maybe that's what they're doing for LG right now. Not uh, just smartphone chips. Who knows? LG servers. <laughs> who knows? I mean, it, 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 it's it's something that a company that size, right? It, it has the opportunity. If 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 they see what's going on here, and if they decide, you know what, this is a fabulous thing. Uh, we love our, our existing data center stuff. We love x86. It's great. You'd love to have a ten or twenty Intel assignees join the narrow sure by next connection. Sure, why not? Why not make it a hundred? A hundred, yeah. <laughs> you know. We should, uh, should consider this place. It's a nice place to be, Linaro. Well, I, I think the interesting thing with ARM is, if, if you look at where we've gone over the last six years, right? So, so you see Moore's law is 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 kind of grinding to a halt. You see every year your 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 single threaded performance is not getting fifty percent better. It's not getting thirty percent better. It's actually getting three to five percent better if you're lucky. What's happening is people say that their servers are getting faster, and that's because you're giving them more cores. Well, if you give them more cores, they run a bit slower, they got to clock it down a bit. So actually over time, what's really happening is we're getting more cores and we're getting more parallel workloads, but we're not getting more single thread performance. And what's happening is rapidly, everyone's catching up to the point where everybody's got you know, similar numbers of cores, similar performance, same kind of stuff. So at that point, where's the value? And I don't think the value in the longer term is in pure compute. I think the value is in offload. That's why I'm also involved in uh, C6, the Cache Coherent Interconnect for Accelerators uh, work group. And what we're doing there is we are uh, working on building a Cache Coherent Interconnect similar to, say, IBM's CAPI or Open CAPI or uh, you know, NVLink or many different technologies that are out there for plugging accelerators very close to the chip. And I think those kind of technologies 
are going to be very interesting in future server designs. And I think that if, you, if you're uh, an Intel or an IBM or one of these uh, uh, long-standing incumbent players, you're going to look at the space and you're going to say, well, compute's kind of boring. So do I, do I really see an Intel or an AMD kind of uh, you know, giving up x86 and, and moving off it over time? Maybe, who knows? Um, but maybe the compute piece is, is kind of boring, you know? What we're doing with ARM is not uh, trying to just replace the compute. What we're trying to do with ARM is we're trying to democratize uh, the architecture to the point where you have 10 different vendors, 20 different vendors more, who all have high performance compute, but then they can all give you something innovative on top. So driving innovation, driving uh, the innovation is better for the world. Yep. And it's the only way we're going to have billions of people with smartphones that have all kinds of smart features that are powered through the cloud. Otherwise, uh, you know, I think things going to burn. I think open, open innovation, open standards, these are the important things. Um, there's a great book that I encourage people to read. Uh, uh, Rod Canyon, who was the CEO of Compaq back in the day, and he went to uh, HPE and, and, and well, HP and then HPE and so on. He's um, doing other things in the industry now, but he wrote a book called Open. And his book's all about the disruptive power of getting industry uh, players together and building open standards. And he famously did this on the PC. Uh, he helped to create what is now known as the industry standard architecture for x86 PC servers um, and laptops and workstations and all these other devices. Uh, but that wasn't the standard when he began, when they began their work back at Compaq in the early days. Uh, everyone had a different PC, they were incompatible, they ran different versions of DOS and Windows and so on, and, and he got together with different vendors, and he wrote a book about it, it's called Open, it's a great read, and it goes through the disruptive power of coming together, and you look at Lonaro, you look at the ARM ecosystem, it's the same kind of strategy, it's getting all these vendors together and saying, uh, we are stronger when we work together than we are if we all try to just, you know, shoot at each other, right? So we used to joke, it's kind of like the, the pirates uh, coming to uh, um, uh, coming to battle with the uh, the navies of the world, right? What you don't want to do if you're a bunch of uh, sort of uh, uh, disruptive pirates coming in, you don't want to shoot each other. What you want to do is you want to work together, um, and so that's what we're trying to do here. Is we're trying to uh, all coordinate, all collaborate together, uh, build open standards, build uh, interesting alternatives, um, but let people innovate on top of that technology.